today I'm going to show you how to make one of these, a bike power generator. There are many ways to make a bike power generator, but here's how I made mine. I used an old bike trainer, a car alternator, a deep cycle battery, some leftover Romex wire, and scrap 4x4. I started by removing the roller mechanism of the bike trainer that creates resistance while pedaling. We definitely don't want that. Then I replaced the mechanism with a 4x4. With a little hand carving, it fits perfectly in place. And I highly recommend hand carving because it's definitely good for you. Well, unless you hit your knee with the chisel, then it's probably not. Next, I plan to reuse the bolts from the roller mechanism to hold the 4x4 in place. So I marked and drilled out the holes and attached the 4x4 to the trainer. After that, I went to move my bike into place only to realize the 4x4 was a bit high. So I trimmed it down and got my bike to fit. With the bike in place, I was able to find the position the alternator needed to be at in order to make contact with the tire. A good thing about using an alternator is they tend to have brackets made to adjust the slack out of a belt already. So if you carve and arrange your 4x4 to accommodate these brackets, it ends up working very well in combination with the bike trainer. With the alternator's forward and back adjustment and the trainer's side-to-side -side adjustment, I had zero problems creating traction between the tire and the pulley. Although, I did find out rubber tires and metal pulleys don't get along, but more on that later. That's exactly what we need. So here's where I started to make some vital mistakes. I thought simply I could take my Romex wire apart, run one wire from the output of the alternator to the positive of the battery, and then run another wire to the negative of the battery. That was it. Probably not the smartest way to do that, but it looks fun. <laughs> I thought I'd pedal, rotate the alternator, and generate power. That was until I hooked up a voltmeter and saw this. Only 12 volts on the readout coming from a 12 volt battery. Now, the alternator should put out 14 volts when I pedal, and if I'm pedaling and that dial ain't moving over 12, then I have a problem. So naturally, I went to YouTube and found a video about a bike generator. This video was from Leo W, and I will put a link in the description to this video for those interested. Now, what Leo's video made clear for me was that I had a bad alternator. After all, I had taken this from my dad's stockpile of random ones he accumulated over the years. So I went to his house and took the other four, assuming at least one of them would work. Now, that's five alternators in total that were all bad. So I called my dad and asked to just steal one from his rambler he had stored in my barn, because at the very least, I knew that one would work. And that's just what we did. I hooked this one up as fast as I could to see if I could get power, and what do you know, it worked. Come on. Going. Now it was working, but strangely sometimes it wouldn't. So referencing Leo's video again, I made a few changes. That included introducing a switch on the wire going from the alternator's power output to the positive on the battery. Also, upon further examination, I found two prongs that required being looped into the power output as well. So with the new switch and the wire attachment, I retested the generator. Okay. No power? Power. No kicking on and off. It's working. Holy crap, dude. Oh. That makes me want to cry. <laughs> Voila, it started charging the battery. Now that I knew things were working correctly, I used some electrical tape to attach the switch to the bike and then hooked up a power converter to turn our battery's energy storage into a usable outlet so we could, you know, watch TV on the porch. Or make a protein shake by the pump track. <laughs> or watch some more TV in the woods. <laughs> Not anymore. Aren't you sick and tired of having your parents tell you to go pick up your mega cool ramps out in your yard? Not anymore. <laughs> Options are kind of endless here as far as I can tell. <laughs> but there's 
quite a few limitations and I have a few cautions. Like I said before, rubber tire doesn't mesh well with pulleys. I thought eliminating the belt and doing straight contact would be an intelligent idea, but the tiny surface of the pulley ended up wearing a groove into the tire. To fix this, I could easily remove my tire and use a large belt like this one without having to change my design. And maybe I'll do that soon, but let's be real guys, spring has sprung and that means trail building season is back on, so unless we keep getting rain, it might be a while before I fix this generator. As always, thank you for watching, I hope you guys are staying safe out there and making the best of this like I am. Also, a huge thank you to my patrons, and other than that, I'll see you guys at the next build.